Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we've got a super creepy tale for you. We're diving into the world of Japanese yokai with a focus on the spine-chilling Rokurakubi, known for appearing as an ordinary human during the day, but transforming at night with an elongated neck or a detached floating head. Rokurakubi is sometimes used to describe both the long-necked yokai and Nukakubi, which has a head that detaches and flies around. Unlike Rokurakubi, Nukakubi is known to harm people and suck their blood. Both types of yokai are active only at night and are unaware of their true nature. The detached head is often seen as a symbol of the soul separated from the body. In the 17th century, a strange rumor spread in a certain village in Japan. People claimed to have seen a giant snake flying through the trees at midnight, and some even said the snake had a human head. The rumors soon pointed to a maid in a particular mansion. Though she seemed like an ordinary girl with a notably pale face, suspicions grew. The mansion's master, a craftsman, dismissed the baseless stories but couldn't shake his own unease. As the rumors intensified, the maid was increasingly gossiped about as a terrifying yokai, tarnishing the craftsman's reputation. Unable to sleep one night, he went outside for some air and witnessed a bizarre scene. A massive snake floating in the air with a human face which looked eerily similar to his maid's. He collapsed in shock, realizing the snake emerged from the maid's quarters. The next morning, the craftsman woke to the maid's worried face, asking why he had slept outside. Remembering the vivid events of the previous night, he recoiled in fear, causing the maid to stand there, bewildered. Seeing her innocent expression, he questioned her about the events, but she seemed unaware, crying over being wrongfully accused due to her pale face. The craftsman consoled her and decided to visit the village market to clear his head. The bustling market fell silent upon his arrival, as the tale of the flying snake had already become a hot topic. Avoiding the sharp gazes of the villagers, he hurried to a secluded spot, only to be startled by an old woman's voice behind him saying, You are harboring a yokai. The old woman bluntly explained that the maid was indeed the yokai in question, and that the craftsman's sighting wasn't a hallucination. She warned that the maid's head must be severed to prevent a disaster. Unable to bring himself to harm his maid, the craftsman dismissed the old woman and left, but her final words lingered. Pray that you find no purple veins or red spots on her neck. Back home, the craftsman hid a knife in his clothes waiting for nightfall. As the maid entered her quarters, he quietly followed. Hearing nothing, he opened the door to find the room filled with mist. Raising his lantern, he was startled by the maid's face staring back at him through the fog. She vanished into the darkness, and the craftsman, now fully awake, saw purple veins and red spots on her neck. With trembling hands, he drew his knife, but the maid tearfully begged him to end her life. However, his knife fell helplessly to the floor, unable to harm her. Accepting her fate, the maid decided to leave the mansion. The yokai sighting ceased, and the villagers eventually praised the craftsman for supposedly defeating the yokai, though he felt no peace. He searched for the old woman to no avail, finding only an abandoned house at the end of his quest. The maid had disappeared, leaving the craftsman with a heavy heart. If you don't subscribe and like, I'll come find you.